What we're not gonna talk about is the Board of Awesomeness, but we are going to discuss it a little bit. And here's why. What we're gonna talk about today is really, really simple. We're gonna talk about the future, we're gonna talk about invention and innovation, and we're gonna talk about a few simple rules that you can use to change what you're doing in everyday business. So my name is Worley, I'm one of the co-founders and work with Phil Wheat, who's up here at Chaotic Moon Labs. We are a division of Chaotic Moon Studios. So what does Chaotic Moon Labs do? He wants to know, right? Let me tell you, whatever the hell we want usually on a limited budget and it's fairly dangerous. But what we've done is we've tried to create a group whose focus is on innovation. Not the kind of innovation you read about in all the Forrester and Gardner reports, not the kind of innovation that you think happened with the iPhone and all these disruptive forces, but actual real innovation, which simply put, comes down to one thing, execution. That's it, right? It's powered by collaboration. So we like to think about it as instigation, collaboration and innovation. And if you'll take those three and think about it, you have to be able to stand out amongst your peers, go to your boss and give them an absolutely crazy idea, and in your case, justify it. You have to collaborate with others because if you try to do the whole thing yourself, more than likely you will fail or your ego gets in the way and you never accomplish the project. And then that's when the innovation can happen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do short videos and we're gonna do a demo. And we're gonna use this project, the Board of Awesomeness and the Board of Imagination, the follow-on to that, as a way of showing you how innovation happens and we're gonna talk about how short of time it happens in. So if we could start the first video. So what are you looking at? Well, it's pretty simple. You are on the bottom of a motorized skateboard. Okay, so what was that? It's a skateboard, right? What you may have noticed is there's a connect on the front of that skateboard. And what you may not have thought about, how many of you use the Xbox Connect? A lot of you, right? Is that Microsoft says the Connect can't really be used in lots of light, like outside. And the background needs to be stationary because the way the Connect works is it blasts a bunch of infrared dots up on you and it has to distinguish you from the background. So for this project, what we wanted to do for CES was show taking a technology and doing something it wasn't meant to be used for all right, and do an innovative way with something nobody would have thought of that would have made everyone in the audience wonder, why would you build a motorized skateboard with Connect on it? And the, pack, the fact is this, the board violates all of the rules, but doesn't violate any of the tools. And what I mean by that is there is no hack. There's no special software, there's no special magic, it's just good process and creative thinking. Now to put the board together literally took a couple of days. It was very, very fast. It has been on 16 different international television stations, millions and millions of views. It's been featured everywhere. It's why we're here, even though we've done a lot of other really cool stuff. But the part was trying to show how you could take parts that already exist and do something very creative with them. And the follow-on to that was what could you do to show that that is not where innovation stops. When we're at CES, Wired Magazine said it was the most innovative thing they'd seen at CES, which made me think everyone at CES should be shot. Because <laughs> it's skateboard. So we built it and we love it, but seriously, it's skateboard. All right, it goes 32 miles an hour, it's really fun to ride, still a skateboard. Doesn't get away from that fact. But what we did was we said, you know, everybody said, well, man, that's great. Like, how are you gonna top that? You're never gonna top that. It's impossible to top that. It's huge success. No, innovation doesn't stop. It's not a point in time. It's not something you do and then you boom, we're done innovating. Innovating is a constant process, constantly reconfiguring your thoughts, reconfiguring the way your organization works, reconfiguring the way it responds. We're moving from a world of control 
and scarcity to a world of abundance and collaboration. And those who move with that change are gonna be very, very successful. You as future business leaders must embrace that or you will fail. So what would you do to follow on to this? Because the challenge from all the reporters was, you'll never top it. What are you gonna do using the same skateboard, right? So within, I think, five days, we were able to come up with an idea, get the parts, write some new software, film a new video, and then respond to all of the follow-on press that that got. If we'll cue the second video now. I, I kind of could too. I love it. <laughs> Polly had clearly been blown away by Metropolis 2. But back at Venice Beach, I was about to try the most exciting bit of technology of our world tour so far. A mind-controlled skateboard. Worley, how you doing, man? Doing great. How are you doing? I'm, I'm I'm very excited. Are what you was, ready that? was that? Was that a little thing with the? That was a little thing. That's a secret mind mm. control handshake. So are you ready to try this? Are you kidding me? A mind control skateboard? Yeah, I am. That's right. So let me tell you a little bit about it. This board has a 800 watt motor. It's got three motorcycle batteries in it, basically, uh, generating 36 volts. It's got a Samsung tablet here and this emotive headset. We're going to put this on your head, <laughs> and we're going to try to train your brain and the board to connect. Once we do that. Hopefully, when you think, kind of imagine where you want to go, yeah. the board is going to take you off in that direction. Okay, so when I'm imagining where I want to go, what, what's happening? We're picking up the electrical patterns and basically the uh, neurons as they're firing in there and converting that into commands for the board. So you want to do a little training? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let me get this on you. Okay. Thanks, man. So I'm getting a great signal. Okay. You're getting a good signal? I'm getting from a good from signal. From my head? From your head. Actually, maybe a little too much signal. Maybe really? you have too much brain power <laughs> for the board to handle. It might not be able to I love to this. I love this. It. There was one real-world problem, though. The headset had been designed specifically and exclusively for Whirly's brain. Before we start, I think yep. it's only fair to tell you the chances of you getting this board to go yep. anywhere are astronomical. And as I began, Whirly's doubts seemed to be confirmed. Nope. Nothing. <laughs> Try again. Ready? Go! <laughs> You've got nothing. If you get distracted, if you look at a pretty girl, if you start thinking, oh, this is too fast, if you think, oh my Who's god, that dog. The golden yeah. retrievers are notorious for distracting yeah. mind-controlled skateboards. It happens all the time. But then something happened. There you go, you've almost got it. That's it, you were doing it. Did, did you hear that? Don't get, don't get, don't get no, distracted. That was brilliant! <laughs> that was brilliant! But that was nothing compared to what I did next. You think forward about launching yourself forward, and if you get it right, it starts to move. It's, it's incredible. It's like something out of a science fiction movie. It's, it's comic book craziness. Wow! The top speed of this is about 32 miles an hour. Man up. Let's put it on high. Damn, man. What are you like? 32 miles an hour on a brain-controlled skateboard. That's a speed limit where I live. That's in fact, I'll get a ticket. Go on, then, Come let's on. do it. We're doing Switch it. it up, baby. Let's do it. You ready? Switch it up. Initially, my nerves about the impending speed were so fired up, I just couldn't concentrate my mind. Confidence. You've got this. But then... That's it. That's it. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Hold that thought. Don't look at me. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Now you can stop. <laughs> I'm so focused, I can't stop. Help! You are the first person, my friend, <laughs> outside of me on planet Earth to ride a mind control skateboard. Number one. Oh, man, that makes me feel really good. Next Seriously. step, hoverboard. Yeah, you, you need it. to do that. I'm living in the future. I've arrived. I've been waiting for this since the 80s. And with that, I thought my way off into the sunset. A beautiful end to the third day of our Californian road trip. All right, so a couple of things. First of all, the headset was not designed for me. Uh, we bought it on the internet. Um, the software was configured to me a little bit with some algorithms that try to take face. But what did you just see happen? So we had the skateboard. It's a weird project. When we were at CES, everybody, the first reaction, everybody's like, what's that? People don't want to talk about it. The next reaction is you have huge crowds of people. Why? Because people are attracted to innovation. They're more attracted to new and strange and cool than you could possibly imagine. 
And that's why Phil and I have a rule in the labs, which is safety third. But when you saw that video, you saw a couple of things. First of all, the board was going to work for him. There was no doubt. But we kind of like play along with everybody like, oh, it might, let's reconfigure the, you know. Because the truth is you're standing on there and you're thinking about it. And then you start thinking like, what if this shit works? <laughs> I don't know how to ride a skateboard. <laughs> I'm going to die. Um, and so we got him set up and we got him going. Now, he obviously was not going 32 miles an hour. And the reason was is he did fall off the board. As you saw, he jumped off and he fell off a couple times. And as soon as you do that, what happens? Your sense of self and protecting yourself jumps in and you get in a situation where no matter how hard you think about going, your brain is like, mm -mm, <laughs> not going to happen. But so, OK, it's a mind control skateboard. Big deal, right? It's a connect control skateboard. Big deal not what these things were about. They weren't about getting press for the company. They weren't about coming to things like this and speaking to you about this. They're about trying to give an example of things that, as he said, it's the future. Not really, we built it now. So technically, <laughs> incorrect. Um, <laughs> but think about it. Did Jules Verne predict the future? No, Jules Verne had a great imagination and he did things and other people said, we're gonna build those things. We're gonna build submersibles. We're gonna build these technologies, right? Ray Kurzweil, who you know, loved him when he built keyboards for Van Halen, um, not so big on the singularity stuff because I can predict these days almost anything. And if you don't do it, the next generation will. I can make any crazy, wild prediction I want. It will come true. That's where we're at in our evolution. That's where we're at in technology. So if you want to know where your future is, right, it's right in front of you. It depends, again, on these things, instigation, collaboration, and innovation. It depends on you not having to take credit for everything. We had a gentleman call us who'd worked on a product that was a follow-on to uh, a company he had done. He'd worked on it for eight years. We took the Board of Imagination's, uh, Board of Awesomeness uh, system. We put it on a Whole Foods shopping cart. We made a shopping cart. It follows you around the store. It greets you. It goes around. It knows what you're putting in it. It adds it up, subtracts it. It knows that you just put something in that has gluten, but everything else is gluten-free. So maybe it should tell you about that and guide you somewhere else. That took three days to build. It was not rocket science. Nothing is. There's abundance of knowledge out there. There's an incredible plethora of tools. You have so many advantages over prior generations that you don't even realize or recognize. And so the point is if you want to know where the future is, it is on a blank sheet of paper in front of you right now. It is that thought you had, wouldn't it be cool if? The difference between those of us at Chaotic Moon Labs and you is simple. The people I hire understand collaboration. They know the difference between control and influence. They also know the difference between reaction and response. You know what the difference is? One of those is voluntary, the other is not. We think about these things, but more importantly, they have no limits, not to their imagination, not to what can be built. That's why companies hire us. We've turned into a career being able to do things that people think are magic and seemingly impossible that are actually just getting off of your ass and doing it. The key to innovation is execution, period. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. I never went to college, right? I worked at Apple R&D. I was an IBM master inventor. I've had a great career, and people always look at that and say, that's where it learned. No, it's an attitude. It's an art. All you have to do is look around you at all of the things you have and just be able to imagine using them together in new and innovative ways. From the Whole Foods shopping cart example to the mind control skateboard, it does not matter. Cars, airplanes, spaceships, whatever, all of that is within the reach of every single one of you in the audience if you will only make the attempt to try. And you want to talk about risk intelligence? It's simple. Just take the damn risk. We could have killed ourselves with all of these things. And that presentation was amazing, by the way. And if I took that test, it would be like, do not give this guy your money or tools or anything. <laughs> <laughs> and it would tell you to stay away. But we only have five seconds. What we are going to try to do is if everybody on this side of the audience will hop out of the way, I'm going to take this mic off, and we're going to try to ride out on the board now. I'm going to be very blunt, very attractive audience overall. But on that side, ladies, speaking to you, don't look at me. Don't distract me. If I think the wrong thing, 
I'm crashing in an audience member. I'm taking out the poor camera guys. Going to try to get the video at the back. So let's do this.